Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And last but not least, Kendrick Lamar. So, yeah. Don't worry, I'm not gonna internalize why I didn't get that. He did. It's cool. I understand. Kendrick, for you, um, Paris, right? I think maybe it's my like sort of stateside bias. I would have imagined uh, the live tour would have been, you know, maybe Compton or a city like that, or not Compton, LA. But Paris, what does that feel like to be in a space like that and to premiere or to film this project? Uh, niggas was just copying Jay Z and uh, Kanye. <laughs> <laughs> no, like David said, that shit, that, that shit holds a special place for us. Cause me and my boy, we was thugging. Well, we was on like a little boat or something, shooting backseat freestyle. Sort of. I don't know if you. Well, I'm not gonna say you have this moment. Do you have moments where you reflect and you realize like what the day is and what you're doing, right? Like, I have moments sometimes where I'll reflect and be like, man, I'm in a certain seat and I can't believe I'm here, or it it happens to me in the moment. Does that happen to you? Uh, hell no. Nah. Uh, I'll be hot. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be going, bro. I was like, I'll be having to, like, this last five years really just, like, to sit me down and say, it could be in the present moment type shit. You know what I'm saying? But before that, I was just going. Like, I, I, I didn't have time to reflect because I was always thinking of what's next. You know what I'm saying? So even in even in um, doing that performance and, and, and getting it together, it was like I was so in it. I couldn't I couldn't think about, you know, ten years ago. I had to think about giving the best motherfucking show for these fans that's out here that, you know, spent all their motherfucking money <laughs> to come see. So I gotta make sure I, I put on some shit, you know what I mean? And my brother did as well. And when you say giving the best show, I feel like there were significant tweaks made to this uh, this performance. I saw Brooklyn. Um, there's some things I noticed that were different about Paris, but just for you all, just to make this project, were there different tweaks you made um, in consideration of filming? Were there tweaks you made to get a better reaction out of the crowd or just being so studied after having so many dates prior to Paris? <laughs> it's the only dude I know that like sit in the trenches, which I was telling you earlier, like, me and Dave, we sit in the trenches all day ever since High Power video. 16 motherfucking hours. I don't give a fuck how much budget we got. A thousand dollars, uh, 1500. We're gonna edit that bitch to death. <laughs> Mike, when you met Mike, he was the only guy we knew that had like doubled down with us. Nigga, we had one hour left until the door was open. We still critiquing shit, making sure shit is all the way at its perfection. And that man right there, I gotta, I gotta give him too much, you know, love and, and respect and props to him because. He know exactly what the fuck he doing, you know, and the questions that I be want to know, you know, he, he, he give us that. You guys get a round of applause for Mike. Especially when it's been successful to not be scared to go to the next thing, especially when it feels like maybe there's a lot on the line. So to do this new endeavor, I'm curious, um, what were each of your learnings um, after not just tour, right, but this tour film? Like what's something you took away? You're like, wow, like. Whether it could be, it could be anything. It could be technical. It can be personal. Um, yeah, just what do you take away from this new experience and this new piece of work you put out? First, oh, man, I don't know. <laughs> All right, yeah, I, think, I, I, I would say like if for me like working on the tour and also being able to like immortalize it in film was like it made me like want to lean more into that and like. Um, I don't know, it's like, as somebody who does both, it's, it's just dope to be able to like, the, the thing you help create on stage, be able to like present it in the proper way. Cause I feel like when you, when you do tours and then usually like things are broadcast or you have to adapt it for an award show or something, it's like, you don't have, uh, I don't know, what's, what's the word? You don't have the liberty or like, it's kind of in somebody else's hands to like, uh, interpret. So I think for me, it, 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 it made me want to challenge myself more into like doing more in the the live, broad, not broadcast space, but just like this live concert space as far as the capture side of it. But I think the tour in general was just like an amazing learning experience. And like, I think Dave and, and Kendrick both like really challenged me to like rethink of, of my own personal style and like certain things I thought were like 
uh, certain things I might have leaned on in the past, I felt like they were like constantly challenging and then like progressed me as an artist and just like as a creative overall. So I would say out of it, it definitely like reshaped how I see myself as an artist and like how I see certain like visual cues or like certain things that I thought were style things. I, I think I've kind of progressed maybe out of it. Um, I would say, that was a great, great answer too, but that probably I think the biggest learning lesson, I think probably owed to Kendrick challenging this element out of us is like the most is, uh, it's like you only kind of get one time to show up, you know, not, you know, it's like first impression type of thing, but it's like, in especially in, in this tour space, it's like, if you really think about artists and touring you know, their touring lives and how many tours they do. If you really look at it over a long period of time, it's like, it's not that many tours. It's probably like, you probably, you know, an artist probably does like, you know, some some artists didn't tour at all. You, you see artists that you know forever, you'd be like, you ask them how many tours they went, I probably went on two tours. So this is, anytime you got the opportunity to get in front of your fan base, you got the opportunity to develop a show and, and play that, play out the thing that you work so hard on, which is the musical element live and the, it's so important to make sure that that element matches our is, is you put as much work in as much time in as on that as you did with the music and anything else you did the cover anything else you did and i think kendrick definitely challenged us like it was one of those moments where it's like you you uh, you come to him with an idea and we're like this is what we can do this and he's like we like we can save money if we do this and he's like no. nah <laughs> you know and it's like you know, and that, that's a big thing because you want to do the right thing and you want to try to be, you want to, you know, do it, you, you know, save money. But sometimes it's like you have to, in order to like, you know, to to to, to develop the pro idea more, you have to kind of bet on yourself a bit more. And he was kind of like pushing that on us. Like, yo, like, we only got one time to do this right. You know, I want to see a clean stage. I want to see this. I want to see that. And I think him just really pushing the envelope on us and making sure that we understood, like, you know, this is not something that, we can just redo, you know, I think that was a really important element. Um, and, it, and it helped us work with even just the, the crews and the teams too, where it's like, you don't settle. You know, somebody says, we got to use this. We ask them why, like, why do we got to use that? Why can't we do it this way? Why can't we do it that way? And you find solutions sometimes that are actually cheaper and, you know, and, and, and easier to do because, and it's, and it's never been done before. So I would say that was probably the, the thing I learned the most. Back on that, it was really a confirmation for me to always just double down on the idea and die by it. Mm. Live and die by the idea. The period. idea is the idea. It's the idea. And we don't give a fuck if that shit, we got to uh, have the imperfections to get to it. It'll never be perfect. But at the same time, we always have a certain template to follow and that's the die by it everybody gonna reach the same goals at the end the know? human like just the human working in me loves that dave is talking about the budget because we'll have conversations and no one ever talk about the budget yeah dave i i feel you dog um <laughs> you know it, it, man, as artists man it's like this is our thing to just fuck shit up bro like, yeah I, 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 you're supposed to, to. to keep it 100 it's like it's like the edge if that shit don't move me it's like but my brother, if it don't move him, it, it don't move us. We can't fuck with it. And if our eyes, if our ideal wasn't a hundred percent, we weren't sure about it hundred percent, we wouldn't have had this tour though. Yeah. Like period. It's like that shit got to make us feel something. I got to feel some up there. I know that shit supposed to feel intimate, but it still got to have some type of bite to it. Like it got to feel like uh, what were we saying? The, the first initial idea was the uh, the, the one man band show, right? Mm -hmm. How can we take that in the form of 16, 18 tracks and make it feel like that in an audience of 16, 20,000 people, but make it feel like 20 people was in there, right? And we had to live and die by it. If that shit didn't work, we had to double down on it the next day, the next show. That's why the show kept progressing, I would say, um, because we was fearless in them ideas. But today watching it it was completely different than watching it in my home i mean it was like i was focused here there's no cell phone around me it's a dark theater there's other people in here enjoying it my man here was rapping along to it 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 was a completely different experience you at scale um i don't know if you guys have put this in theaters but i i really do think yeah who said that who said yeah 
Okay. Oh, you again. All right, yeah. We on the same page, dog. We again. Yeah. All right. I hope you got the budget. We talking about this money. Yeah. yeah. But it. I'm talking about yeah. But yeah. Yeah. I fuck with you. But um, that that's what I felt as my learning as an audience member. It's like, damn, the importance of the theater. Um, and what it, it gave me a different experience with the music. Um, but my final question, and Kendrick, this isn't directed to you because we talked off stage, and I don't. You're so present in the moments. I don't think this. You can answer this, but for Dave, um. Where does this film sit in the evolution of you all's, Kendrick Lamar's, visual storytelling? I mean, honestly, I, I think this, it has its own special zone. You know, a, a lot of, a lot came from this film. We were able to, we were able to like film, like screen this film live for kids in Brazil, kids in Africa, you know, why, when it was happening, like on some outdoor hangout type of vibe, like it's, this thing touched so many different elements, like the level of production, having to work as a team. It it, it kind of has its own space. It, it's definitely like it takes a, a bone or it takes a piece from what we've already been doubling down on as far as our visual language. But you know, I I would I would say it, it it's like it set off a chain reaction. We're seeing like in the industry that this is a new medium. I mean, not a new medium. It's been a medium that's been around, but it's been a medium that the doors are being reopened on and. Now we can see, you know, different performers in, in, in theater. So I think we just, we're a part of that evolution and it's a whole new space being carved out and we're gonna see artists probably taking, you know, a lot more bigger swings on like how to, how to have an interactive show, how to make it for a live audience, how to capture it for the, you know, archival purposes for the future and, and be inspired and re-inspired. And, you know, for, for me, that's, I think, it's like it's a whole new world that we created for ourselves. So just really doubling down on that and and not honestly not living in the moment and being like, OK, we did it. We're going like Kendrick was saying, we're going to do it again. We're going to try to figure out how to take it up a notch. You know, how, what's other things that we can attach to this element? <laughs> You are leaders in this space and it's felt. Um, and I, yeah, I just want to thank you guys for your time today, man. Um, the film is phenomenal. I felt something different in each watch, especially here in the theater. And for all you all, um, I'm sure you guys watched it on Prime. It's first available on uh, Amazon Music's Twitch and Prime channel, but um, you can run it back today. That's that's the thing you can do. Yeah. So um, yeah, I just want to thank you guys for joining us today. Give a huge round of applause for our guests. Thank you guys. Thanks,